और वक्त वृंद की ओम अज्ञान तिरंद ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुवन्मीलिम ये नस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्री गुरून वैष्णवांश श्री रूपम सागरजात सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पर्जना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता नमा ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे वाछाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्णा लेट अस वेलकम इस ग्रेस राधेश राम प्रभु थ्री लाउड एंड एंथुजियास्टिक हरि बोल See, Let's welcoming me it. is not a great thing. I am only one person, but welcoming all the leaders is yes. a very uh, difficult thing to get the leaders together because everybody is like an apex in their own pyramid, and for them to come together is the most difficult thing to happen in the universe. <laughs> My special master once made a group called the CSB, hmm. Counselors for Spiritual Vision, fourteen of us. But then he wanted us to meet every month. Then he told us at least alternate months. And then finally, all of us jointly decided at least quarterly we should be able to come. Mm-hmm. But now it doesn't happen more than once a year now. Mm-hmm. The reason is the members of this group who are there, like Radha Gopinath Prabhu, Shamanand Prabhu, Govind Prabhu, Gaurang Prabhu, Sanat Kumar Prabhu, myself, Gauru Gopal Prabhu, right? You know, such kinds of Rajvi Hari Prabhu, Shikshastakam Prabhu, and people like that. So different people are in different continents on the globe. Huh? so getting the people together so maharaj used to say if devotees who are preachers and counselors if they can take out time to come together and come in the association of equals and seniors maharaj said that community will become extremely powerful it will be unbreakable practically huh? which is a very difficult thing to do because i know how busy y'all of you are and your schedules are and you have you are lined up with so many things to do So therefore, they deserve to be welcomed. Then we will welcome them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So His Grace Vishwapati Mukunda Prabhu, are you here? Hare Krishna. Prabhu ji is here. Let's welcome Prabhu ji. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. And let's welcome Amal Mahaprabhu and his whole group here. You know, so many preachers together coming here with three Lord and enthusiastic Hari Bols. Hari Bol. Hari Bol. And Nirendra Prabhu from Nalgandha Congregation, Prabhu is the leader there, and he has also got some leaders here. Let's welcome with three loud Hari Bols, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. We'll start the slate session. So we were doing this topic of seeking divine empowerment. Uh, Prabhu, did I send you notes one and two? Offer this. 
If I haven't, I will send you. I will put it in your WhatsApp. You can send it to all. I'll put it in this. Uh, Oh, the dragon drop. Oh, it's open, I think. It's open, it doesn't drop, huh? It's not coming. I think I have to close it, I think. No, I will. Because if you send it now itself, people can see in their uh, mobiles also. They don't have to. Sometimes uh, they have to stretch their neck. Uh, okay. uh, now it's coming. We got it now. Huh? Part one and two. So part one mostly I've finished. Uh, now I'll do part two. See, seeking, this is the part two, how to recognize an empowered devotee and seeking divine empowerment and Prabhupada's mood in accepting Lord's empowerment, okay? This we will try to complete today. Mm -hmm. Please read it, one of you. Who has the mic with you? See, in part one, we did these things. You know, uh, we are actually doing the course three, equip yourself to get empowered. In that first topic only you are doing, uh, seeking divine empowerment. That the different types of power and what is empowerment elaborately we discussed in two, three sittings. Now we are doing how to recognize an empowered devotee, okay? Yeah. Hare Krishna. How to recognize an empowered devotee? Any place where the Supreme Personality of Godhead is present by His name, form, qualities or paraphernalia immediately becomes a dham. For example, we speak of Vrindavan dham, Dwarka dham and Mathura dham because in these places, the name, fame, qualities and paraphernalia of the Supreme Godhead are always present. Similarly, if one is empowered by the Supreme Personality of Godhead to do something, the core of his heart becomes a dham. And thus, he becomes so extraordinarily powerful that not only his enemies, but also people in general are astonished to observe his activities. Because he is unapproachable, his enemies are simply struck with wonder. As explained here by the words Dura Sado Ati Dur Darsha. Ati Dur Yeah, need further. Shaktya Vesh avtaras are incarnations of Vishnu's power invested in a living entity. Living entities are also part and parcel of Lord Vishnu, but they are not as powerful. Therefore, when a living entity descends as an incarnation of Vishnu, he is especially empowered by the Lord. When King Prathu is described as an incarnation of Lord Vishnu, it should be understood that he is a Shaktyavesh avatar, part and parcel of Lord Vishnu, and is specifically empowered by him. Any living being acting as the incarnation of Lord Vishnu is thus empowered by Lord Vishnu to preach the Bhakti cult. Such a person can act like Lord Vishnu and defeat demons by arguments and preach the Bhakti cult exactly according to the principles of Shastra. As indicated in Bhagavad Gita, whenever we find someone extraordinary preaching the Bhakti cult, we should know that he is especially empowered by Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna. As confirmed in Chaitanya Charitamrit, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahe Tara Parvartan, one cannot explain the glories of the holy name of the Lord. What happens? Okay. As indicated in Bhagavad Gita, whenever you find someone extraordinary preaching the Bhakti cult, we should know that he is specially empowered by Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna. As confirmed in Chaitanya Charita Amrit, one cannot explain the glories of the holy name of the Lord without being a specifically em empowered by him. If one criticizes or finds fault with such an empowered personality, 
one is to be considered an offender against lord vishnu and is punishable even though such offenders may dress as vaishnavas with false tilak and vala they are never forgiven by the lord if they offend a pure vaishnava so here it is said that the core of the heart of such a wonderful devotee who becomes extraordinarily powerful now who is considered extraordinarily powerful that is very important to know one boy who graduated from one of our colleges you know he got placed in a job in some far away place so from there he wrote a mail to me and said prabhu ever since i came here there was one college in my neighborhood i started preaching within one year 20 boys have taken to chanting now they have come to eight rounds and some of them have come to 16 rounds also so prabhu i cannot believe how in one year i have met 20 devotees <laughs> and single handedly with no support from anybody i went to that place i started from the scratch so i was thinking prabhu this is very similar to what prabhupad did in the west <laughs> you know you know prabhupad went to new york and then he went to park you know prabhupad went to park i went to hostel that's how it is friends then i said what are you talking i said see who taught you to wear tilak who taught you to wear dhoti kurta who taught you to have a japa beads like this and where did you get the philosophy to speak from huh? you know all these things you simply have borrowed from prabhupad so what you have is borrowed plumes you know what is borrowed plumes sometimes you will see this bharatanatyam doing girls they dress like a peacock you have seen that they this called peacock dance huh? they dress uh, with lot of peacock feather type of thing all over the body in the head also everywhere and uh, they they make the neck like a bluish dark bluish one and then they dance like a peacock and it is very much appreciated but uh, those plumes what they have are, is not their own huh? peacock is having its own plumes but they have got what plumes borrowed plumes so i told this boy everything you have is borrowed one why should you be proud of that hmm? you know you are not speaking any philosophy from your heart you are borrowed from prabhupada books hmm? you just cut paste and go and speak it to people you know you learned everything every small thing you know, what type of lifestyle you were leading before and now this change in your you know what is so great about it you are just uh, copying what you have learned and you should not be so proud i wrote back to him in a mail so she said prabhu ji i was thinking you know uh, krishna shakti vinanahi tara pravartan shastra se i thought that i can be it can be applied to my life and i said never not even in your dream also hmm? you know don't imagine yourself to be a self abundant acharya huh? i scolded him It's very dangerous for you. Mm-hmm. I said, you don't know. There are many couples. Like one couple went from India, Prem Padmini Mataji, uh, when she was a student in Bombay. Uh, and then she came to Juhu Temple. And later on, she got married to a gentleman. He also. And they were sent to West for preaching. You know, when they started preaching within a couple of years, two to three years, they made about 700 devotees or so. From there, many devotees were sent to various parts of the Gulf. And now all over the Gulf, they have four, five thousand devotees now. Huh? Yeah, and they have many yatras now. Huh? Shama Desh and Damodar Desh, huh? different, different Desh like that. It has expanded, and many of the students became devotees. So she wrote a book called "As Free to Preach." Huh? You know, that's a book. Huh? So now each of those yatra leaders are very good souls. Huh? like uh, shri vallabh prabhu and people like that very very advanced devotees mature devotees and uh, i have given sometimes online lectures for them sometimes i have seen uh, they practice very seriously and sincerely and you know making 3 4000 devotees uh, in a decade or two uh, fixed up devotees they made many many and many of them returning back to india you will see they are very fired up devotees also so basically like that yatra similarly in different parts of the world also different yatras come up um, youth preaching congregation preaching and everything but all of us where is that where do we get the blueprint from we get from proper books huh? we have proper books we also have uh, 
Yeah. You know, we have Istan society already well established. GBCs are there, you know, and GBCs are meeting regularly and uh, GBCs have given guidance in the last so many five decades or so huh? for expanding the society, norms, policies, everything is made. Uh, and Prabhupada has taught every small thing. Even uh, Prabhupada taught women how to wear, uh, kur, uh, I mean, sari. You know, he himself wore around his own body. He showed, showed women like this, you tie and you put like this. Uh, and he went to America. Because, uh, and Prabhupada taught them how to brush the teeth also. Hmm? And how to wear the tilak, how to wear the kantimala, how to shine the japa beads. Hmm? Every small thing, uh, every small thing he taught to them uh, <clears throat> very kindly. And uh, sometimes when they would eat, sometimes they would use a tissue paper just to rub the hands. Huh? Rupa said, no, you can't rub the hands with tissue paper. And he said, Vedic life means cleaning is done how? With water. You have to use water. So he taught them. Every small thing, Rupa taught them very meticulously, very patiently. You know, Rupa took, you know, saffron cloth in a big bundle, in a uh, trunk. So when it reached America, devotees opened that trunk and took out, and they brought the big scissor, and every devotee cut from that trunk, uh, from that uh, cloth, and took it. So some of the Matajis, they also took saffron clothes, and they were wearing saffron sari. How many of you have seen that photo? Some Matajis wearing saffron sari. You have seen that? It's there, very famous photo it is. They are doing uh, kirtan in the street. So Prabhuji is Mataji, everybody is wearing saffron. Devotees are so innocent actually in the early days. Prabhupada carried clothes for them in the bundle, he carried tilak for them. So one should think about the early days of ISKCON, how Prabhupada started, he cooked for them, uh, different cuisines, uh, he taught them. Every small thing, he gave a blueprint and everything. So, when he talks here about empowered devotee, why we call Prabhupada this empowered devotee, I will share one, uh, this thing with Leela and Prabhu, which I will request him to send it to all. See, 14 predictions of Srila Prabhupada preaching in the West. It is already predicted. Uh, Videsham uh, Gamyate Maya, like that she says. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, you got it. Huh? I oh, got that also. You huh? can send that to everybody. Yeah. So, Leland will send you all. It's going, coming. So, in this way, uh, 14 predictions of Prabhupada going to the West, it's there, there in different scriptures. I put it all together. Uh, and Prabhupada going to West is not the, in, you know, incidental thing. It's a planned thing. It's a very serious matter. It is just, Going to West is predicted already in the scriptures. Huh? So, and also, when Prabhupada went to West, there were many, many Bhagavad Gita's already sleeping in the library catching dust. Hmm? But when Prabhupada brought his Bhagavad Gita as it is, within four years, there were women, American girls wearing saris, American men wearing dhoti kurta, wearing tilak, kantimala, beating murdangam in the street and doing harnam sankirtan, chanting Lord Chaitanya's names. Huh? And then going around and distributing his books huh, all over the country. So it's not an ordinary thing. Huh? See, sometimes in India, if you if you if you tell in a lecture you should wear sari, you will be taken to task sometimes. Huh? You know. But there you can see American girls wearing sari is not an ordinary thing. And American boys wearing dhoti kurta. Huh? And that too, they were all into drug addiction, all kinds of things. Yeah, what kind of faith that he earned, what kind of commitment and surrender that they showed. Huh? They laid down their whole life. Huh? Last five decades, many of his disciples have been faithfully serving. You can see that. So, the kind of radical change he brought about in the lives of people is unimaginable. Huh? And in such a short time, how many kinds of activities he started. You know, he called Jayanand Prabhu and told him to make rathas and make ratayatra. Huh? So, Jadrani Mataji to do the painting. Chaitanya Chaitanya was brought out in how much time? Just two months, 17. Huh? 
టూ మంత్స్ సెవెన్ వాల్ మెడిసిన్ కింగ్ చైతన్ చరితామృత అండ్ ఎస్టాబ్లిషింగ్ సో మెనీ టెంపుల్స్ ఇన్ ద వెస్ట్ హీ క్రియేటెడ్ న్యూ ధామ్స్ ఇన్ ద వెస్ట్ న్యూ బృందావన్ రైట్ న్యూ తాలవన్ న్యూ జగన్నాథ్ పురి వెర్ ఇస్ న్యూ జగన్నాథ్ పురి శాన్ ఫ్రాన్సిస్కో అండ్ న్యూ ద్వారక లాస్ ఏంజలస్ యా సో న్యూ బృందావన్ వెస్ట్ వర్జీనియా సో ఆచార్య ఆచార్య సార్ లైక్ వెరీ పవర్ఫుల్ పవర్ హౌసెస్ వీ వీ డ్రా ఎ లిటిల్ పవర్ ఫ్రమ్ దెమ్ అండ్ వీ వర్క్ ఫార్ దెమ్ అండ్ ఆన్ బిహాఫ్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ కరెక్ట్ నా దట్ ఈస్ కరెక్ట్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ అనదర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఐ టెల్ యూ వన్ సై వర్స్ ఇన్ ఉత్కర్ష్ క్యాంప్ ఇన్ మాయాపూర్ ధామ్ సో you know generally the lunch time is a time when some of the senior devotees will bring their boys to me just to you know introduce them to me because otherwise 4 500 boys very big crowd i just continue giving lecture kirtan everything so in the interval time they would bring them so one boy was brought in front of me he was a university topper gold medalist so one devotee came and said radhesham prabhu you know somehow krishna used me as an instrument in bringing this university topper to krishna consciousness i just thought i'll introduce him to you <clears throat> i was the one who gave one time in the college and after my one time program he asked one question huh? and then eventually now i am seeing in the following one year he became a 1600 devotee which how krishna does miracles through us i realized prabhu ji he said then he went away then another uh, senior devotee came and said Raj Shampu, it is my humble self who gave the device for this boy. <laughs> Six session. Somehow Krishna used him as an instrument in making him a devotee. Because I was talking to this one boy, this university topper, and one by one these fellows came. One fellow said, I am the one who gave Sankalp camp to this boy. Because I was, I happened to be the mentor of the boy. I guided him and all that. I, and one fellow said, Dapruj, I am the counselor of this boy now. almost five six devotees came and went one by one after everybody went i asked the boy my dear boy you tell me you have so many fathers now huh? success has many fathers and failure is orphan it is said na huh? so many people are ready to father you now they all are so tell me what inspired you to become such a wonderful devotee even though you are a gold medalist and you know he said prabhu how wonderful prabhupada books are huh? no yeah. So I read the books and whoever came to support me, I appreciated. But my conviction comes from the philosophy. I read in Prabhupada's books and I cannot see anybody so sincere and so transparent like Prabhupada. He is so core, is honest to the core in his presentation. Even when Prabhupada chastises the Mayavadis and scientists, that only increases my conviction and, and love for Prabhupada. Because... he is really a wellwisher of every living entity in every letter he writes you were ever wellwisher his boy said so later on i called those five six devotees and told them prabhus all of you are like basketball basketball players in basketball what do you do you take a ball one fellow is doing otp one time program you do that so give a boy to that discover yourself boss then he takes a ball and gives to sankal you give it to him correct no then he gives him and in this way finally who liberates the boy takes him back back to god proper is like the tall african you know players you have seen that they just catch the ball and they put it inside huh? you know <laughs> so i said ultimately they have become connected to proper's movement they are progressing further and all of us have our roles to play i won't say none of you have done anything for him but we should see ourselves as someone who is contributing a little bit in that person's life i'll tell you a real example from my life see i was standing at uh, nigidi krishna mandir correct no i used to put a book table there so one boy came from bajaj auto you know he tall boy very very good boy very good asking good questions so he purchased a book from me later on he became sundar krishna prabhu you know in pune very wonderful devotee later on he arranged program in his room also for me in bajaj at i was going one another boy came so he picked up the book science of self realization and he also asked some questions appeared very smart i took his number then i told him i am in uh, kunjberi temple you can uh, visit me we can leisurely talk so he came to the temple we sat 
Yeah, it was a heavy rainy day. Still, he was catching a big umbrella and came. And uh, we had a talk for a couple of hours. Many nice things. He asked and I also shared. Then I gave him an assignment. Yeah. Uh, because he said it's vacation time. Exams are over, he said. Then I said, please make me an article on vegetarianism. I have to submit to the reverence for all life. You know, one organization, they asked me. So within a week, he brought a 10-page article. You know, he made a nice article with nice headings and gave, and I sent it. I thanked him. I gave him prasad. So one day he told me that, Prabhu, now uh, in uh, in Dehu, you know, there is a temple where Ayapa temple. Huh? There are a lot of programs happen there. If you come, it will be nice. You know, we will put up a program. So he and his closest friend, they both were leading a youth club there. So they arranged a program. Something like 150, 200 people came. In those days, I only had an overhead projector. Huh? I used to carry and stencils we used to put in the top. By the time these colorful projectors were coming slowly, this kind of projectors were coming slowly. So I did the, I did one program there. These two boys were the organizers. They were doing everything. They would take care of the chapel stand. They would cook also, assist also, everything. So later on he said, my father attended your session and he has become a little frightened huh? because he heard that if you drink flesh and eat blood, you will become a tiger in the next life. Huh? You know? So certain things you said, you know, my father is little upset. So he was thinking, uh, he saw you as a brahmachari. He is afraid I may become brahmachari also like you. So there's a restriction. And then he said, therefore, I got a job in Bombay also, Pune also. I'm going for a job in Bombay. Then he went to Bombay. He was very attracted to Govind Prabhu personally huh? and Gauranga Prabhu. So from Gauranga Prabhu, he derived Srimad Bhagavatam study inspiration. Hmm? From Govind Prabhu, he derived inspiration on being personal and Friendly like a brother, loving and caring. Uh, and from Paramita Ranath Maharaj, he was most charmed by his personality of being compassionate and kind and caring and uh, the great love. Uh. So eventually, he went on to become his great Gaur Gopal Prabhu. Uh. And then later on, he took that uh, direction of uh, reaching out to the mass of people in the world. Uh, you know? So... <clears throat> Now, if you see the basketball example I was selling, no, I took, the, the, if you assume Gauru Valpa is like the ball, huh? I took him and then I, then he wanted to go to Bombay event and he connected with uh, Govind Prabhu. So, Govind Prabhu was personal touch, he liked it, like a mentor and caring and all. But then he heard Gaurang Prabhu's Bhagavatam classes, he was very charmed. Huh? Then he met Gaurang Prabhu, saw his notes and uh, saw his classes and his style of Bhagavatam presentation, he was very attracted those days. Then when he met his Holiness Ranath Maharaj, that was a turning point for him. Uh, he used to make short, short clips of Ranath Maharaj's uh, talks, where he especially talks about things like relationship, happiness, and uh, sensitivity, and things like that. So once he gave me also about 20, 30 of Maharaj's small clips, he would be very, very amazed by that. He said, world needs this. Huh? If we give this, we, you know, people will come from animal to human platform. Huh? He used to always tell me those days. So, later on, that's the direction that he was most uh, attracted by. And he took, uh, he gravitated in that direction, uh, which has become his foundational principle, correct? Huh? The things which he's teaching now. So multiple people are involved in uh, many cases. Similarly, in my company, one uh, Matra and Platt company I was working. One day I went to the Microvax lab. One fellow was looking at his friend and said, Jai Shri Ram, he was selling. So I thought this fellow is saying, Jai Shri Ram, he can become a devotee. Huh? So I just met him in the lunchtime and gave him a proper book, coming back. I gave. So next day he came back and said, book was very great. You know, I'm, I'm going to Belgaum. Do you have more books? Huh? I said, I have a dozen books. He said, get all of them, he said. I'm going for 10 days. So he took all the books. He came back and said, I finished most of them. Huh? I got a lot of time at home. And then he asked me, where are you living? I want to come and see your place. You know, I want to practice also. So he came and saw where I was living. He liked my lifestyle, waking up in the morning, wearing tilak. Immediately he picked up, hmm? very easily. And then uh, only he didn't like my prasad, which was very simple. Huh? He said, what is this? You are eating khichdi in the morning. And then I told only one, another item I know is upma. Hmm? You know? So he said, oh... What is this upma? It looks like uh, salt uh, halwa. Huh? Because he didn't know what is this upma. Huh? So these are the two items I used to make. So one day I tried making chapati. It came like a Britannica biscuit. 
you know he said i had to break and eat it you know? so at that time is allness bhaktrasan maharaj told rajeshan pro started too many programs he is not able to manage if you go get a job in pune you can also join him we all can work be together for each other it will be a good support so he got in killas ka royal engines so he came gauranga prabhu ke and gauranga prabhu saw my prasadam item is it what kind of prasad is this is prasadam is something special so immediately he and this fellow they both went to market and they purchased big big vessels he brought next day morning was thick dal sabji and chapati hot hot up chapatis you know and all kind of items so rice also rice he would make like uh, jasmine so nicely he would make and this friend of mine who who i brought from the company he said who is this personality i i am meeting now he became attached to gorang prabhu huh? he he told me rashan pai is wondering whether to continue staying with you because i can't eat this now i got he said this is the most important thing in this moment he matters who is his personality sudama prabhu so, yeah. <laughs> so in this way i brought somebody and then he was attracted to gorang prabhu huh? then when he went to bombay he saw krishnanand prabhu he was very charmed by that holy name krishnanand prabhu chant he has attended many many classes of krishnanand prabhu so he also started liking for chaitanya leela and krishnanand prabhu chanting so then chanting became his most important aspect of loudly he would chant you seen that he speaks many lectures on chanting also many many rounds also he chants every day so yeah uh, maharaj sent the three of us to pune me and uh, Uh, Rupa Goswami Prabhu and Sudama Prabhu because Sudama was known to me, so he was there for a short while in Pune, but the Pune was cold climate, didn't suit him. So he went back to Bombay, settled in Bombay, and Bombay he was very nourished by multiple devotees, Shyamanand Prabhu, Radha Gopinath Prabhu. He was inspired by many of them like that. So in this way, we all can think that when people come into spiritual life, some people will be initially inspired by us, huh? and then later on they may be inspired by some other devotees also maybe one maybe two maybe three huh? many others like in those days when chaitanya charan prabhu joined to pune you know you ask him how he joined he will tell you one thing the one secret he learned from my early book called as bhagavad gita for youth huh? that book was distributed in the hostel so he was most fascinated by this information on four defects huh? so four human defects and pratyaksha anumana shabda so after that he told sundar krishna prabhu that i want to meet this fellow radhishyam prabhu and then he came to temple and asked many questions and then he became very charmed by scientific presentation of the philosophy in those days he would every week he would catch me for three four hours asking questions one day we were going to bombay the train all through the train i asked how many more questions you have huh? you know his holiness purnachandra maharaj gave him one title Chaitanya Charan Prabhu means is Prashna Sagar. He told him. <laughs> he gave him the name. He can ask many many questions. So when I saw that he has so many questions, I told him, I think I have to make many trips to Bombay now to answer your questions. He would ask. I would keep answering also. So I would spend many hours in the early days. But certain questions I answered, I was my answers were not sufficient for him. He said, Prabhu, this uh, black holes and uh, you know questions about the space and astronomy and all he was not fully satisfied hmm? so then i told him see next week one great soul is coming his name is michael cramo no huh? is druta cramo prabhu hmm? so druta prabhu wears saffron he gives bhagavatam class he went to the room he wears coat suit boot tie blazers everything goes for a conference huh? goes to ncl goes to big uh, research institute is a scientist also is a scientist come brahmachari both huh? so he came so when he went to his room three hours he didn't come out yeah. after three hours when he came out he was like uh, you know lord nimay pandit after returning after taking diksha yeah. we all know after nimay pandit took diksha and returned back to uh, navadvip he was like a krishna hunted man correct no where is krishna where is krishna he was searching <laughs> similarly chaitanya ran prabhu after meeting him he came and told I asked him, so what questions you asked? What Prabhuji answered? Said, Prabhuji, don't ask me. My God, what personality he is! He said, all my scientific doubts are finished. He said, he knows so deeply every aspect of science. He answered my questions very thoroughly. Plus, 
he is so humble and uh, so simple you know his personality i i learned one thing you can be most learned and you can be most humble also hmm? i am really charmed he is here in pune for two more days and i have told him i'll meet him tomorrow again huh? so next two days he met and took all his books and he read his books also and i was very pleased uh, to see that that he could uh, you know clear up all his doubts which were pending hmm? uh, and later on he i was doing one magazine spiritual scientist which i gave to him and he developed it to very great extent i was only doing a hard copy book then he made it into uh, e sign after that then he made so many nice things he started writing and speaking tree and i saw he grew very fast he, he started gita daily and all these things uh, then i told him that i want to introduce you to many senior people because you are a very good writer and speaker like shamanand prabhu and uh, radha gopinath prabhu and isvan bhakti sanat maharaj so you know i told him that because you are writing you should go and show and share with them and learn more from them and everything so he went met many people he was very very happy amongst them he found a great friend in shamanand prabhu huh? shamanand prabhu is one of his most favorite because shamanand prabhu if he jokes uh, he will not laugh but you will laugh like anything catching the belly huh? he will throw coolly throw jokes like anything huh? very light uh, in his dealing huh? uh, and very charming to the heart of all the devotees huh? so and also he is very much uh, keeping abreast of the world the happenings and everything and you ask him what happened today morning in any part of the world he can tell you huh? he is very very well informed he is from mba background everything you know a lot of things he knows so they both connected well and he became a good friend later on he started traveling all across the globe he is now he is an international figure coming. coming here at the next week yeah so now you know if you ask him he may say oh radhesh shampu is my mentor he is my counselor he may say you know early days he gave me so much time he may say that but we should know that people have already made lot of progress in their spiritual life in the previous lives also huh? when they come in the later years they may grow to very great heights huh? and uh, what we should do we should act in our life as facilitators huh? like amal mahaprabhu in his college days uh, he was a very brilliant student huh? when he came uh, when he joined the pune temple and after that uh, at one time he requested me can you please introduce me to radha gopinath prabhu and uh, his one is bhakti sam maharaj huh? i want to ask them some questions so i wrote a letter to them and he went and spent a lot of time with them later on he wrote some books huh? art of uh, concentration in the age of distraction he wrote a book on on time management also now he has written a one book on parenting huh? and uh, he was he was a very good preacher he went to iit chennai and made probably about 50 devotees 16 rounders is one of banu maharaj was amazed you know yeah. how he preached and made so many devotees because many people are coming going coming going but he has a very strict disciplined system of bringing them to the point of morning program and you know everything in a very systematic fashion you know? taking carrying them ahead now he is here in hyderabad in one part of the which part of the city name ah uh, what is the name kondapur yeah in kondapur he has a nice community what do you call it gavnetai home gavnetai home and uh, then when he got married he got a wonderful devotee wife who is also just like him in her, in her devotion service mata ji is here ah uh, she is here yeah they both had exactly like minded nature they both joined hands and now they have put up a beautiful community there so you will see that as people grow and they also get many other devotee association and we have to facilitate it and if we choke it then our relationship will become strained if somebody says i am giving you love and care why do you want to go to any you know is it then you know, some people become it's called possessive counselor so i call it as there are two type of counselors there is a baby counselor baba counselor i'll tell you what is it see baby counselor means they want you to remain their babies they should never grow you should never walk on the ground i will always keep you like this like children some child is taken sometimes children they grow even at 10 or 12 years still some mothers fathers they keep the mother shoulder wait wait don't walk we are there to take care of you he said now i have a proper leg again walk no 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 it's called baby counselor huh even if you have to sneeze you have to take permission from me yeah probably can i sneeze now yes after that yeah probably can i go to bathroom yes permission granted <laughs> permission granted 
What counselor is this? Baby counselor. They keep everyone as babies only. They don't grow them. They don't empower them. And Baba counselor, my Lord, they are completely indifferent. You ask a Baba counselor, Prabhu, your boy, I found him in San Francisco. You know that? Oh, San Francisco, he never told me. He never told me and I never asked him. Take her wherever he is. You know, let him be Krishna conscious. He is Baba counselor. He has no information about his counselors. This is diametrically opposite. Completely opposite. Some people are very possessive. Some people are very indifferent. These very possessive people, they, they sometimes too much lord over their people. Hmm? For example, you know, they may say that, like one counselor, what he did, he went to one, he came to one meeting wearing this uh, one t-shirt, where this uh, Damodar, you know, the, you have seen this Krishna looking at the parrot, that he was wearing that. And then he asked all the counselors, how do I look like in this? They said, Prabhuji, you look very beautiful in this, very nice. He said, I have come with a purpose in today's meeting. He said, all of you Prabhuji's, any marriage you go, you should wear this type of t-shirt. And he gave everybody one one t-shirt also. He said, I am sponsoring it for you. So all of them took it. So one of his counselors called me on phone and said, Prabhuji, I took the t-shirt, but I am little hesitant to wear it for the marriages. Because, you know, many of my relatives and all, already they are pulling my leg. Huh? You know, Prabhuji, I generally don't show myself as a devotee to them. Because, you know, otherwise they will trouble me. I can't answer their questions and all. But I like to be a devotee. But Prabhuji, is it a disobedience to counselor? Yeah. I said, no, no, no. If you tell him, he won't mind it. I said. So he went and told him, Prabhuji, thank you for the t-shirt. I, but I am unable to wear it for marriage. Is it all? No, 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 no. If you disobey the instruction, you will go to hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to wear. Everybody must wear. You heard that if you have difficulty, I will also wear and come with you. You call me to the marriage. I will give you confidence by being with you. My Lord, he got more frightened. Again, he came to me and said, Prabhuji, saying like this, what I should do? Then I said, don't worry, I will put a word to him. Then I called the counselor and said, Prabhu, you see, you have the right to institute chanting 16 rounds huh? and asking them to follow the four regs and study Prabhupada books and do the morning program, come to his temples, eat prasadam. These things you can do that because these are found in Prabhupada books, letters and everything, general things. But over and above that, you cannot become too rigid in giving your own personal instructions. Huh? And then he started asking, you know, Prabhuji, did he say anything wrong? I am trying to increase that Krishna consciousness, Prabhu. I, he can also be Krishna conscious. He can make everybody Krishna. What did I say wrong? He was telling. I said, see, your intention is well taken. Huh? But everybody has some reservation and you should not enter into the, you know, inner private circle of people. Huh? Because everybody has some private circle and one should not too much go into that. Then you spoil the relationship. Correct, no? Like, for example, you when you go to somebody's house, you, the man is there, his wife is there, children are there. Huh? You can talk to the man, but you cannot ask too much information about his wife or about his children. Hmm? Or you cannot force them because that is his private uh, affair. If he is interested in taking some consultation from you, you may help. Hmm? But too much getting into personal affairs of people, is uh, that will lead to rejection. Huh? And the relationship becomes strained by that. It's not very good. So I told him that this is one such area you are trying to venture into. What you can do is, today I am wearing a t-shirt. If you all like, you may wear such t-shirt. It will be very inspiring to people when you go to marriages. If any of you like it, you may do so. So it's a voluntary thing, not a not a mandatory thing. You cannot make it a mandatory But you can't say in a class, if all of you like, you may chant 16 rounds or you may not chant also because I should not interfere with your spiritual life. <laughs> that you cannot say. You must chant how many rounds? Ah, because who said that? So, whenever we say anything, we can bring <coughs> Prabhupada quotes, Prabhupada says this. Because when you say Prabhupada says it, you know, so-and-so great soul said it, his Holiness Ranath Maharaj says, we should be Trinata Peshuni Chana. Similarly, Prabhupada says, you should chant Sikshin Down. They will say that he's a very good preacher. He always quotes, you know, previous Acharyas or current Acharyas and 
he is giving us very good teachings which are good for us and he is also in line with them like that they will feel so they are happy with you for two things one is you don't tell them that you should follow me you are telling them prabhu i am following prabhupad you also follow prabhupad and all the gurus they are great souls i am not a great soul i am also one amongst all of you but i am trying to follow i am sharing with you you may also follow that is one reason they are happy with you huh? another reason they are happy with you is you are not bringing any utpatan any new thing on your own you are in line with parampara that many people are happy with huh? one is you are not pushing your own things but you are you are in line with guru parampara so the attitude matters a lot long before in uh, 90s there was one brahmachari in pune he is no more now so that brahmachari he was one of the first batch bhakti shastri we have we all did so he he also did that he was a hindi hindi preacher he was he was there for two three years then he went away after that so this fellow what he did he got his bhakti shastri certificate he got it neatly what do you call that uh, laminated laminated he did that then he called his congregation from 40 people and then told them dekho humko bhakti shastra degree mil gaya hai aap log humse seekhna padega ha aap log kisi ne aap mein se ek bhi bhakshastra nahi kiya hai isliye jo bhakshastra prapt kiya hai unse aapko seekhna padega like that he spoke in one class ha and he gave them a form to fill up so they all filled up the form and then gave the form to me saying that prabhu ji we want to learn bhakshastri but not under this fellow huh? and then i called him and said hey prabhu aapke group mein out of 40 25 people want to attend bhakshastri but they are asking me for a different preacher they asked me personally i said i don't have time i told them one book i can take like no i can take other books others have to take but uh, they told me prabhu ji fix any preacher except this one for this he said who said that who said that huh? bring him to me he said I said, Prabhuji, all 25 of them said that. I said, none of them want to be with you. He got wild. Then he asked me, are you going to sanction it? He asked. I said, see, Prabhu, I cannot force them to learn from you. See, you have spoiled your relationship as that teacher. Yeah, your teacher also needs certain qualities. You are not a proper teacher. Yeah. because the way you spoke to them you dealt with them they felt you are very aggressive and very pushy and very demanding respect you know you should command respect by your good nature and good behavior therefore i cannot force them to take course under you then he told me then tell them that i will not give them the weekly program then i told them they said thank you he said, we never wanted he was forcing us to come we were coming you give us another preacher they said so the whole group went away from him because of his one one arrogant behavior you see this is this is a very important thing because sometimes in a haste or in crisis we speak some strong things to certain people and that strain that happens in relationship it actually goes for many years sometimes it can happen when you become little angry sometimes i don't say that even i become angry also i have also sometimes dealt in crisis situation little strongly uh, but certain situations are repairable certain situations are irreparable like i heard one story very moving story once uh, a father went to a gas station to fill up the gas and his small boy uh, took one stone and he started uh, writing something on the this thing in the uh, car on the other side of the car it was a newly purchased car so the father finished putting the gas and he turned around and came he saw the fellow is uh, taking a sharp stone and writing something father was so enraged you know he the spanner that he was having in the hand he went and bit the hand of this little boy huh? and the boy started screaming but he went into a, he flew into a tirade huh? pat 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 three four times he hit the boy in the same hand like this huh? and uh, and the poor little child he fell on the ground rolling on the ground he, he couldn't tolerate the pain other people surrounded and said what are you doing to the child they, uh, then after that they said let us rush him to hospital so they took him to hospital they gave him something anesthesia or something and the, then he went to doctor's room doctor said see some very heavy blows have happened on this little child's uh, fingers so we have to you know amputate his two fingers uh, 
they said they amputated the two fingers yeah. and then after the boy came to normal situation the boy went to father and said papa papa when will these two fingers grow he asked and he could not say anything huh? then he went and saw the place where the boy was writing so what he had written he said papa i love you hmm? that's all he had written with a stone so and uh, later on he even cried even more huh? because the child didn't write anything senseless hmm? he wrote something meaningful so the result of anger is you know later on uh, it is such a painful thing for both huh? the child also suffered the father also suffered because of this so these kind of occasional outbursts emotional outbursts that come uh, we, sh- we should be very mindful of that and how can we be mindful for that we have to watch our own nature no? because if i have a too high estimation of who i am huh? if i have a hell around my head or i have a holier than thou attitude then i also expect that everybody should respect me they should honor me they should bow to me they should uh, fulfill all my expectations so that kind of nature what happens because i am having a wrong uh, opinion about myself too high estimate of myself then i also will deal with them like that even in family situation husband wife children mother father grandmother grandfather and all many a times the angry situations come because of expectations huh? holding too high expectations so like i knew that whenever i have assistant when they commit mistakes i don't become very angry why because they won't cook for me otherwise they will say prabhu ji became very angry i am now ta ta to prabhu ji then to get another assistant is very difficult so i used to tell me assistant will become very angry i tell him please kindly go to the next room i'll talk to you later <laughs> you drink one glass of water and cool down and i prepare my mind what to talk then after half an hour i'll call him come now <laughs> because now i am already prepared my mind what to talk because he committed a big blunder if 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 he comes in front of me and says prabhu ji what happened then we become more angry no. correct no we tell him we will talk later later <laughs> give me some free time i am i have some urgent call or something i'll, I'll call you later then that is called as envisioning huh? you prepare your mind how should i sanitize my speech huh? sanitizing your speech means speaking in a way acting in a way like a proper human being huh? not like an animal hmm? like that so in this way just because i am mentor of somebody or counselor of somebody i can't afford to be too possessive huh? or i can't be too indifferent either huh? the both are two extremes huh? if you are totally indifferent you will never make a community huh? if you are overly possessive you will put off some people also huh? and when you become very possessive your expectations also become it goes on increasing huh? when people sometimes talk with angry glances at each other you have seen that people you know then what as they say look at it they don't have to speak many words only with their glance only is very dangerous glance <laughs> because that's because expectation level has become very high too much increased so one uh, counselor uh, he came to me with his counselee and said <clears throat> prabhu ji humne is bhakat ko bhakti mein kada kiya ab ye bol raha hai ki kisi aur ke paas jana chahta hai aap isko samjha dijiye he said like that then i said usko baad mein samjhaunga pehle aapko samjhaunga aap baith jaiye then i told this other devotee you go away now i will talk to the senior first then i closed the door then i said see you should always understand that when i preach it is their kindness that they chose to follow what i taught every jiva has the free will so he chose to become a devotee not that i made him devotee even krishna doesn't take away the free will who is who are you and me <laughs> even krishna doesn't take away the free will so we should always think i preached so many people i preached to they don't become devotees but this jiva is so good that he chose to become a devotee no. and this jiva has also chosen me as a mentor or a counselor or a preacher that is his free will huh? tomorrow if this jeeva comes and tells me prabhu last 3 uh, 4 years i was with you i had a nice time huh? but i want to learn certain things i feel that i cannot get from you uh, that's another devotee 
you know, I want to learn these qualities from the devotee. I need your blessing and permission. So what, what we should say? We should say yes or no? Yes. Okay, yes. Like that you will say? Yes. Oh, yes, Prabhu. I facilitated you in your devotion service all these years. Now, if you like someone else to facilitate you, you can take their guidance. Not a problem. Uh, because I can't give certain type of shelter what he wants, which I am unable to. One example I will tell you. Some people are very emotional. They need a person who can sit with them, coolly talk to them, smile, speak very less. Huh? Mouth should be closed, but eyes should be open. Huh? That means I should be open. That means you are listening. You are nodding the head. You don't speak. Huh? You have open posture. And you are sitting as if the in this world you have all the time for them. Huh? So some people who are emotionally driven, they need that type of shelter. They need. If you <coughs> meet them and you say, huh? you, know, you want to meet me? Really? It's five minutes all right. Huh? If you look at the watch like this. So I had given one uh, congregation devotee to one counselor. Within two days, he came and told me, Prabhuji, can you change another person? He said, I asked, what is it? Prabhuji, he doesn't sit only. He is like a lightning. <clears throat> He's asking, you know, can we, can we talk while walking? He said. So <laughs> this fellow is an emotional seeker and that fellow doesn't know what emotion is. Huh? So the, it's an improper match. Correct, no? Nowadays, what I do, if somebody is a little emotional, I also look for counselors who are also of that nature. Very nicely sheltering. Both are very... Smoothly, they can sit and talk. Then I connect accordingly. Huh? Somebody a little intellectual, connect them with intellectual people. Like that, they connect also. Then the, there's the match. They will stay lifelong with them. Huh? If the match is good, they stay also. Go on peacefully. So, why am I telling you this? I will tell you, all of us cannot satisfy all people. Only Krishna can do that. One example, I tell you, Arjuna needed enlightenment. Krishna gave him enlightenment. But Satyabhama needed emotion, emotional support. Krishna gave her emotion. How? When Satrajit died, Satyabhama kept it in a, a very nice medical, what do you call that? A, a, a facility, a chemicals and all, not chemicals exactly, like a, a, some scented uh, oils and everything she had put, preserved the body, preservatives she had put. She wanted to tell Krishna that her father had passed away, correct now? And then Krishna was out of station somewhere and he returned back. And Krishna already heard the news that Satyabhama's father passed away and she lamented a lot and she wants to share her, you know, grief with Krishna. So Krishna was mentally prepared. When Krishna came, as soon as Satyabhama, he cried so loudly, Oh, your father has passed away. He's so dear to us. And he saw the body. Oh! Like that, so much he cried. Satyabama had to pacify him. Take it, take it, take it. You cool down. <laughs> cool down, cool down, my dear husband. You know, you know, don't cry so much. Then actually she was very satisfied that this fellow also lamented as much as me or even better than me also. Huh? Correct, no? So now how many of us can do this? Tell me. Huh? Correct, no? It's difficult. Therefore, I am very convinced in my life that I cannot shelter everybody. Uh, therefore, I allow people that, you know, you take as much as you can take from me. And if I am not able to provide you a certain support, you can also go to others. There are many other devotees also. Because we are not Krishna to do such things. Krishna can do it. Actually, he is all opulent in all respects. Correct, no? So, therefore, when we know our limitations, we can reduce our expectations. Huh? When you don't know your limitation, then you think, why are you leaving my group and going to that group? Huh? Because you want to hold the people out of your possessiveness, but you don't know that you also have limitation due to which people are going to other places. Another thing that makes people leave us is talking ill of our equals. Huh? For example, why people talk ill of their equal friends so that this person will not go there? But may, you will see that this person will make sure he goes there to check whether what you said is true or not to figure out. Huh? You are saying don't go there, I'll go there and check. Huh? Let me see. And then he will see that, oh, it's not the way you told. He's a very good person. Then it becomes confirmed that uh, you know, you told something wrong. Their trust in you is totally shattered. Huh? So we should never talk ill of other devotees. So, 
what we are doing in hyderabad iskon abich temple in counseling system we are saying that three meetings you take fourth meeting you call your friend another counselor you take again three more classes you take fourth you call same another counselor or one more counselor over the advantage is what by doing like this hmm? they will also get to hear from others huh? besides you sometimes you can sit your friend can sit both of you can share the dais and what do you call it panel huh? so you can uh, both of you can uh, speak on certain theme i can tell you that will be 100% attendance you will get people will come running because people love love panels even more than a singular person speaking because they want to find out what feelings you carry for the other and how do you relate with the other devotee so those things are very pleasing to devotees like one time his holiness jayadud maharaj came to chapati no is on ranad maharaj said is holiness jayadud swami maharaj is prabhupad's senior most disciple and in front of him i have no qualifications to speak i am simply a fool he said and jayadu maharaj took the mic and said yes rana swami is a fool because he is so tender and so so wonderful devotee like a flower he said huh? so that that fool he said he used it in double meaning you know yeah so in this way when uh, there is a panel of uh, two people two or three or four devotees speak many will be very charmed huh? many devotees will happily come for such meeting his grace dwarakadesh prabhu told me in mira road they have like five or six counselors are there so he said that every three months the quarterly what they do instead of individual counselor meetings they get this five six counselor groups together huh? and uh, all the uh, every time different groups lead the program huh? announcing Uh, and also performing bharatanatyam or performing some drama and putting up different variety programs and the whole group attends it's like a big family huh? and then there are also individual you know uh, counselor meetings also so he said this has done such a great good he said because there are many people who may be our counselee they may not talk certain things to us but they go and talk to someone else in whom they have confidence for example a child in a village uh, like a little girl you know when she grows to puberty she has some attraction for a boy whom she thinks she wants to marry she will go and tell her grandmother no buddy yes because she has full faith in her grandmother the grandmother will not release confidence at the same time she will maturely handle it and grandmother will say you are interested in that boy okay i will take care then what grandmother will say she will call her son my beta your girl is already in the marriageable age she is 18 now what do you think of that boy can you get his horoscope then uh, she will arrange the son to get the horoscope she will see the match the matching well grandmother will recommend the son that i think we can give our girl to that boy is a very good uh, family and the son will say mama you you say why will i not do it we'll go ahead and smoothly marriage will happen nobody will know what happened in the background <laughs> they would do like this huh? in villages huh? and on the other hand in case the match is not happening you know then the grandmother will tell the son that okay we will just drop this case then she will call the girl privately one on one and tell her you forget this boy because although you are attracted this attraction is superficial huh? externally you look attracted to each other but you know he is asuragan you are devagan huh? after the marriage you will suffer like anything huh? when you come near papa said no man is good woman is good when they come together they become bad huh? the person huh? similarly some marriages when they come my lord yeah, because the match doesn't happen properly huh? so once the grandmother says no the girl will remove it from her mind huh? no more second thought she will say because she has full trust that she is my well wisher so the village was having 30 40 people uh, joint family and every child had multiple different type of this kaka this is mama this is uh, na, you know nani this is dada did that everybody different type of sweet relationship with different people so community is also supposed to be like that our people have relationship with many ideally speaking they can have relation nowadays what happens if you are in one counselor group you are going and talking to another counselor counselor must come here what were you talking tell me give report you know give report they will say my lord this fellow is speaking as if he wants me 
Huh? Even my father doesn't own me so much. Huh? Can't I talk to anybody? Some people come and ask me. Prabhuji, if we talk also, they don't appreciate. And also some counselor groups, they, what they say, our counselor group is the best and their group is worst. <laughs> You know, that kind of, this is our, see, in Tamo Guna, a devotee thinks, I am the only devotee, nobody else is devotee. What Guna it is? Tamo Guna. And Raja Guna means, I am the best devotee. Nobody is as best as me, that is Raja Guna. Hmm? So, Sata Guna means, I am a devotee and I am also, I can also see there are many others trying to be devotees. Huh? They are also wonderful devotees. There can be many nice devotees. And Vishuddha Sattva means, I am not a devotee, everybody else is devotee. Hmm? That is Vishuddha Sattva, you see. Uh, the one, Lord Chaitanya said, I have no love for Krishna. Huh? Vishuddha Sattva, one feels like that. So we have to ask, we want to be in which guna? Huh? If you are going to be in Tamaguna, you think I am the only devotee. It's very foolishness it is. Huh? How ridiculous it is to think like that. Huh? Thinking I am the only devotee. Huh? It's crazy it is. So, therefore, the extreme possessiveness is very dangerous. Huh? And uh, what happens by that extreme possessiveness? We may try to hold people in our shelter for which we may say and do certain things. Like uh, every one of you leaders here, you want to see your people follow you, follow your guidance, report to you, and then uh, do things as you want them to do. Correct? No, all of us want. people. Are... But in case they are not doing, like, uh, like one counselor uh, was very unhappy with one counseling. That counselor was not coming for the meeting regularly. One class he would come and three classes he won't come. Again one class he would come, another three classes he won't come. Like that. No? And Yatra came and the devotee came and brought the form. In those days we had a form for Yatra, you know. The counselor has to sign. So the counselor said, I cannot sign this form now because you got only 50% attendance. And he said, see, you know, this Yatra you are not coming. But you have to come one year for 100%, you have to come for all the meetings. And if you don't come, I will stop your initiation, he said. So then this devotee came to me and said, Prabhuji, I want to change the counselor. Huh? Why? I asked. Prabhuji, he is speaking as if he is only going to give me initiation. Huh? As if he is a guru himself. Huh? You know, he said, I will stop your initiation. He's saying like that. So he got, that devotee got very offended. He and his wife, they switched over to another group after that. Hmm. So what happens, if you strain your relationship with your people, it will be very difficult to repair that. Like, you know, if a pot breaks, again to reassemble is very difficult, correct? It's, uh, so we have to be very mindful of that. Some of us, we have experienced that at some time or other in our life, we have spoken improperly and we lost our relationship with few people. Do we want to increase that number or reduce that number? Reduce or eliminate it as far as possible. So, therefore, we should know, I am not a guru. Huh? I am not a counselor. I am not a great soul. I am actually a coordinator, a facilitator. And what is my knowledge? You know, we are trying to read from our books and make some notes and try to speak to people. And our realizations are not that great. Huh? We have not gone into the... We have not studied scriptures extensively and intensively. Huh? Scriptures are vast and oceanic. Huh? Acharya means, you know, they have vast knowledge, huh? you know. So, we should not, now, one is the knowledge aspect, one is sadachar aspect. See, if somebody has a lot of knowledge, he has a big head, but imagine somebody has a small body and a very huge head. Huh? It's like that he has a lot of knowledge. So, in South Indian uh, Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, there is one example. Your knowledge is like your eyes and your sadachar is like your legs. If somebody is lame, then he cannot travel place to place and preach. Imagine both legs are broken. You have to just be in one place. Similarly, you are a very knowledgeable devotee, but his sadhachar is not good, nobody will welcome you. People will say that, bye-bye, you are very intelligent, thank you. They will not welcome. They will close their doors for you. On the other hand, when devotees see that our behavior is good, we are unassuming, we are humble, we are gentle, we are respectful. Uh, even those things which you institute very strongly, like discipline and everything, we should actually corroborate with Prabhupada's letters, quotes. Say, I am telling you, Prabhu, because this is very important. We have to be careful. Maya is very powerful. Prabhupada says this. You know? So, because we are quoting Acharyas, they will like you. That They will say that he is just repeating what Acharya says. And for our good only he is saying. Once their heart trusts you, that 
Yes, this person actually is my well-wisher. He may be strong. Uh, see, good leader is one who is strong as well as, you know, gentle. You have to combine this feminine and masculine traits. Huh? But uh, the strong side should be authoritative. Huh? We should not try to uh, use uh, our own, uh, you know, muscle power to make them obedient. Huh? That will not help so, therefore, when we talk about the empowered Acharyas, like Prabhupada and you know, Bhaktisant says Thakur, who is a ray of Vishnu, huh? these are all extraordinary souls. We are nowhere near them. We should consider ourselves that I am uh, grateful that I am given an opportunity to repeat this knowledge. In my understanding, our lifespan is short, say 60, 70, 80 years. In this span, whatever best we can do, we should do and push off. <coughs> And in everybody's life, one time I met my special master in his room in Bombay. So he was telling a very interesting point. He said, in every situation, you should ask the question, how best can I serve? He said, sometimes I can best serve by offering spiritual shelter to somebody. Sometimes I can best serve by allowing them to go to someone else and receive that shelter and not be under me. Because I am not able to do good to them because they don't have respect for me. Uh, they have respect for someone else. Okay, let me put them under them. Huh? And they can, like one boy, you know, from Bombay, he wrote to me, Rashan Poy, like your uh, Brahmachari lectures. I want to join full time. He asked, who is your counselor? He said, Gaurang Prabhu is my counselor. Said, you should go and tell your counselor. So Gaurang Prabhu immediately wrote to me and said, this boy wants to come to Pune. Huh? Can he join your temple? I said, most welcome. So he joined here, Pune. So two years later, one of our boys in Bharti Vidyapit, Mayapur boys, so he told me, Rajan Prabhu, I have a lot of respect for you, but for Gaurang Prabhu, I have my heart. <laughs> he said, Gaurang Prabhu's jokes are so great. <laughs> I like his uh, this thing. So, Prabhu, I want to take PDC training in Chopati. <laughs> I heard Gaurang Prabhu gives two, three classes in a week. In those days, he was giving. I immediately wrote to Gaurang Prabhu, Prabhu, this boy very much is fond of you, want to join training there. He immediately accepted. Yeah. So, why we both did this? He is sending someone to Pune, I am sending, because that's where these boys were feeling shelter. We should so I allow that shelter. We should also know when we are giving shelter, we are not giving people our shelter. We are giving Krishna shelter, Prabhupada shelter, Acharya shelter, Parampara shelter. We are not giving, will any of you show your feet and say, take shelter my lotus feet? Can anybody say that if you say, People will think this fellow has to be taken to mental asylum. Huh? We cannot say, here is my lotus, we take shelter. We are giving Krishna shelter to them. Huh? Because Krishna lifted the go over the nail and gave shelter to the whole Vrindavan. Huh? Vajabhasis, isn't it? So, like people like Acharyas, like Prabhupada, they can say, you take shelter of my feet. They can say that also. If they say also, it's not wrong. Because they have that power to deliver. What power do we have to deliver? Huh? We, we ourselves are uh, making uh, effort to practice and survive in Krishna consciousness. So, therefore, the possessiveness and uh, uh, hardness in dealing these things. So, one should have a proper understanding of empowerment. Read this, Shakti Vaishya Avatars. Hare Krishna. Shaktyavesh avatar are incarnations of Vishnu's power in, invested in a living entity. Living entities are also part and parcel of Lord Vishnu, but they are not as powerful. Therefore, when a living entity descends as an incarnation of Vishnu, he is especially empowered by the Lord. When King Prithu is described as an incarnation of Lord Vishnu, it should be understood that he is Shaktyavesh avatar, part and parcel of Lord Vishnu. Ah, that means Prithu is not Vishnu. He is a part and parcel jiva who is empowered to act like Vishnu. Mm, correct, no? Therefore, you will see when Prithu chased after the earth, you know, and finally subdued the earth, and earth agreed to yield everything. So, in what relationship did he accept the earth? Anybody knows? He speaks to her. Actually, <coughs> she asked him a question. <coughs> that, oh king, <coughs> you are saying that you will cut me into pieces. But if you cut me into pieces, then how will all the living beings uh, stay? Because earth is required for the jivas to sit. There is 8 billion population on earth, no? So where will they stand? Where will they stay? You know what he said? 
I can cut your um, bodily earth into pieces and I can, in my own mystic potency, I can give them all, uh, you know, facility to stay, he said. So he was very angry that she is not yielding the uh, crops and everything like that. Mm-hmm. She understood, my God, he is very, very powerful now. His Vishnu's power is exerting. Uh, and later on, his anger became appeased when she agreed to. She said all the chori bhute, the word she uses, that because the thieves are eating grains and not serving Lord Vishnu by yagnas, therefore I was not giving. Now that such a good king like you has come, now I will give all the yield, she said. Then he became pacified. After pacifying, he told her that I accept you as what? Anybody knows? In Prithu you will read. Huh? It comes in the fourth canto. He told her that I accept you as my daughter. He said, huh? I cannot accept you as my consort, but I accept you as my daughter. He said. The reason I will tell you why. Because if it is Sakshat Vishnu himself, Vishnu can only accept Sri as his consort. Whereas Prithu Maharaj is not Sakshat Vishnu. He is a jiva, but he is empowered by Vishnu's power. So, devotees always accept the internal potency as their daughter. One example I will tell you. Uh, in the Tirupati Balaji hills, Anathacharya, when he was there, you know, uh, one day uh, he saw that uh, the garden, you know, the flowers that he was making in the garden were all spoiled. You know, and, you know, they were all, somebody had removed them, somebody had walked to the garden, he was very angry. So he wanted to find out who is spoiling it. So he hid himself in a bush huh, and watching. So night he saw one young boy and young girl and they were catching each other's hands and they were extremely beautiful and nicely decorated. You know? So the boy was plucking the flowers you know? and then collecting them together and giving a flower bouquet to the girl and she was accepting it. So when they were coming like this close, immediately he understood uh, said, this is none other than Lord only, Lord Srinivas only. And this is uh, his, his consort. You know? He saw, so he had a rope in the hand. He threw it huh, like this uh, around them. Of course, he didn't know at that time that they are Lord. He thought that these are lovers, he thought. So he threw the rope around them to tie them. But then that boy escaped. Hmm? Only the lady re- remained. So he tied her to a tree and said, See, now, now that I have captured you, you know, he has to come because he will come to fetch you. Huh? At that time, I will catch him also. Why are you guys spoiling the garden, taking everything? Huh? Like that, uh, he asked. So, in the course of talking to her, many things he spoke to her. When the sun rose in the east, she said, "Oh, now I have to go now, huh? because you know we are very close to this place. Is my husband's place?" Huh? She said. Then uh, he also thought it was getting time for the uh, Lord to be woken up. So when he went to the altar, he saw a hole in the Lord's heart because Lakshmi was not there. Huh? There. And then the Lord said, uh, He asked the Lord, Where is Goddess of Fortune? He said, You only have arrested her. Huh? You have tied her to that. He said, Oh my Lord, he immediately went and released her. <laughs> then Lakshmi ran back and she occupied the heart of chest of Narayana. Uh, and then on that day, he sang a beautiful song. He said, My dear Lord, since uh, uh, she took my shelter, I accept her as my daughter. So in this way, you have become my, my maplai. Maplai means. Uh, you become my son-in-law. <laughs> so in this way, I am giving her to you back. He said. Similarly, devotees accept the uh, internal potency like their own daughter. So he also accepted her as a daughter because a devotee. Huh? He is a devotee of Vishnu but highly empowered like Lord Vishnu. So Prabhupada also is Shakti Avesh Avatar. Why? He, Nityananda Avesh came on Prabhupada. Huh? When Nityananda Avesh comes, you know, Prabhupada exhibited the kind of compassion that the world has never seen. Huh? You know, like well, like in those days, one uh, Narada delivered one uh, Valmiki, we keep telling the story. Huh? Huh? Our Lord Chaitanya delivered one Jagai Madai and Prabhupada delivered hundreds and thousands of Jagai Madais. Huh? He delivered. It's not an ordinary thing. Hmm? Therefore, he says here that uh, you know, if somebody is extraordinary preaching, they are doing like Prabhupada, we should know that they are highly empowered by Lord Vishnu. Vishnu Shakti Vinanahi, Tara Pravartan. One cannot explain the glories of the holy name of the Lord without being specifically empowered by Him. 
If one criticizes or finds fault with such an empowered personality, one is to be considered an offender against Lord Vishnu and is punishable. Like when uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, came to India with his uh, disciples, American disciples. Actually, he didn't know where to keep them. There was no matha. But he trusted his God brothers. He told them to stay in one matha. But then when Prabhupada was busy in India, some of his God brothers spoke something ill against Prabhupada eh, to the disciples. They said, hey, your Guru, Swami Prabhupada, he was just a businessman before. Eh? You know, somehow he used his business tactics in America to preach and bring you guys. But if you really want knowledge, you know, we have many sannyasi disciples here who are disciples of Bhagavan Thakur. They know Shastras very deeply. You should take their shelter and things like that. They started speaking. When Prabhupada came back, he came to see that his disciples are being spoiled, poisoned and polluted. Immediately he had to remove them from there. Then Prabhupada understood that some disciples are, some of his god brothers are favorable and some are unfavorable. There was an Ananda Prabhu. This Ananda Prabhu was such an innocent and pure-hearted soul. He cooked for all the devotees and he made them all sit. He gave one chair for Prabhupada to sit in the corner. And he was running personally and serving prasad to everybody. And Prabhupada said, just see, this is a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava delights more not in eating but in serving. Plus, you can also see he is so non-envious. Huh? You know, I, 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 I am bringing all of you here, but he is simply satisfied in serving my disciples. Huh? So there were some non-envious people, like Puri Maharaj was also completely non-envious, very friendly to Prabhupada. It's one of the Bhakti Shri Maharaj, completely non-envious and very friendly. In fact, Prabhupada went to his matha on the rooftop. He was sitting with his disciples. When Prabhupada went, he came and embraced him and said, Swami Maharaj, you have satisfied our Guru Maharaj's desire huh? that preaching should happen in the West. You have done a magic. Huh? Now you have brought many of the disciples. Then he saw those two people, Achitananda and Kirtananda Swamis. You know, he called the both of them and said, Hey, you, both of you are born in the Western world and now you have taken sannyas. I can tell you, in India you go around, thousands of people will follow you. Huh? People in India are going to be charmed that, you know, Western bodied people can also practice Krishna consciousness with such sincerity. So his eyes were glistening with tears in great appreciation and glorification in the moonlit night when these two boys saw Bhakti Sridhar Maharaj's genuine appreciation coming from the heart. They immediately wrote a newsletter and sent it all over the world. He said, what a sweet relation exists between Prabhupada and his senior god brother. And Prabhupada was telling these two boys that this personality, Bhakti Sridhar Maharaj, he is very, very close to Bhaksan Sridhar Thakur. Therefore, he has given him the name Bhakti Rakshak. He's a protector of the bhakti and he is deeply learned in Sanskrit. And Prabhupada said, I am not as learned as him. Huh? In fact, whenever I want to refer something in Shastra and get clarification, I, it is him I consult. Huh? So Prabhupada glorified him also. So Prabhupada gave him a lot of respect and he gave appreciation to Prabhupada. So such a sweet relationship. Huh? On the other hand, there were others. Huh? So one of the God brothers, uh, you know, in Mayapur, when Prabhupada wanted to buy a land, hmm, some god brothers told the Muslims that you sell to anybody but don't sell to this Swami. Huh? The inside people only troubled. Prabhupada came to know, then he thought, I have to quickly buy. And Prabhupada said, if these people choke me from buying in Mayapur, I will make Los Angeles the headquarters. Prabhupada said. Huh? So, uh, and then in the meantime, Zulun Tamaksha Maharaj could purchase the land. He purchased it. And when Prabhupada went there, some God brothers from Gaudiya started asking, you know, how can he call himself Prabhupada? Prabhupada's name is only for our Guru. And then when the matter came to uh, our Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, see, this is desire of Srila uh, Rupa Goswami, Prabhupada. Sanatana Goswami, Prabhupada. Bhaksan Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada. So the name Prabhupada is used for any great personality who has had a very great influence eh, in the lives of hundreds and thousands of millions of people. And Prabhupada said, I followed the order of my Guru. Bhagavan Chakra's order, who followed it? Eh? Uh, uh, taking the matter to West, printing and publishing books and distributing, eh? and uh, bringing the Westerners. Eh? And also Prabhupada said, I never call myself Prabhupada. You look at my signature, what I write? Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami, that's all. But my disciples, they call me Prabhupada, and that is the standard. Uh, I don't call myself, I am, I am the Prabhu and all of you are at my path. I don't say that. 
Jaipal said. So Prabhupada, in this way, and there was some uproar against him. You can see that. Therefore, here he says here, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahi Tara Prabhupada. One, if one criticizes or finds fault with such an important personality, one is to be considered an offender against Lord Vishnu and is punishable. Even though such offenders may dress as Vaishnavas with false tilaka and mala, they are never forgiven by the Lord. Lord, you know, doesn't take any offense if uh, somebody offends the Lord, but Lord takes offense when somebody offends Lord's devotees. You heard this song, you know. Hare stane aparade tare hare naam. Hare stane aparade tare hare naam. Tumastane aparade nahi paritan. Jai varo karuna karo vaishnava gosai. Patita pavana toma vinek hana. Yahara nikata gele papa dure jai. Vemana doyala prabhu keva kota pai. Gangara paracha hoile paschate pavana. Darshane pavitra karo ye tumara gun. Darshane pavitra karo ye tumara gun. Devaro karuna karo Tomara Hridaya Tara Govinda Vishra Govinda Kahena Mora Vaishnava Paran Kati Jangne Kori Acha Charane Radhuli Narata me koro doya apna raboli Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna You understand the meaning of the song, right? No? It's a very beautiful meaning. Uh, you know, Yahara Nikata Kele Papa Dure Jai. If I come close to such pure Vaishnavas, all my sins will be gone. Just like when light is switched on, the darkness is gone. Huh? Like that. Similarly, you know, in Ganga, only when you take bath, you can get purified. Whereas pure Vaishnavas like Prabhupada, simply if you look at them, you get purified. Mm-hmm. Gangara parasha hoile paschate pava. Darshana pavitra koro yatu maragon. He says. And then he says in the same manner, you know, Lord Hari is residing in your heart. And Lord Hari himself says that in the scriptures. My devotees are remembering me and I am always present in their hearts. Tomara khade sada govinda vishram. Like that he says. And if I offend Krishna by chanting Krishna's names, I can get rid of the offense. But if I offend you, such great soul like Srila Prabhupada and Acharyas, you know, that offense cannot be eradicated easily. It's Vajra Lip, huh? very dangerous. In this way, every birth, I pray that I get shelter of such an Acharya, life after life. Prati Janme Kuriyasha Charaneya Dhuli. Narottame Kurodaya Apunarapoli. So in this way, uh, one should nullify all our offenses by glorifying. So even. Uh, some of us might have offended Prabhupada in the early days. Like I used to think, you know, why Prabhupada is bringing Krishna every time? So once I went and asked uh, His Holiness uh, Bhaktivedanta Maharaj, yeah, I said, see, Maharaj, here the word is used to Purushottam. It can be Narayan also. Why Prabhupada is saying it is Krishna only? 
Then he told me, four shlokas later he showed me, read the verse. Yasyam vai shruyamanaya krishne parama purushe bhakti rudpatyate pumsam shoka moha bayapa. Correct, no? Here the word param purush, it can be Narayan or it can be uh, uh, Ram or it can be Krishna also. So how do you know this param purush is Krishna only? Because there is one verse which is anartho pashamam saksha bhakti yogam adokshaje lokasya janato vidvam sakre satam. In those series of verses you will see uh, one verse says that apashyan purusham puranam mayam cha tad apashrayam veribhyasa bhakti bhakti yoge na manasi samyak pranihite amale apashyan purusham puranam mayam cha tad apashrayam Veda Vyas what he did he was sitting in rapt meditation and taking the bhakti yoga paradigm you can take jnana yoga paradigm ashtanga yoga paradigm or bhakti paradigm so he took bhakti paradigm Bhakti Yogi and Manasi, Samyak means completely. Pranihite Amale, with not even a tinge of any Karma Jnana Yoga and that, no mal. Huh? And then Apashyan, he saw, what did he saw? Apashyan, Purusham Purnam. See, who is the Purusham Purnam? Who is Purnam Purusham? Krishna, because Ram is Maryada Purushottam. Huh? And uh, Narayana is called as Purushottam or Leela Purushottam. But Krishna only is called as Purnam Purushottam. Huh? Apashyan Purusham Purnam Mayam Chaitata Pashyam. He saw Purna Purusha Krishna and by side he saw Maya which was completely under his control. Similarly you can see Yasmat Param Na Paramas Tikinchit Yasman Nani Yojo Yos Tikinchit Vrikshai Vastab Do Dividishtat Yekas Tenedam Purnam Purushena Sarvam Si Purnam Purushena This again this Purna Purusha is who? Krishna only. Similarly uh, Yajjihvagre Vartate Namatubhyam. This is by uh, Devuhuti is telling. Huh? What is that famous verse? Ahobata Shapachoto Gariyan Yajjihvagre Vartate Namatubhyam. Te Pustapaste Jehuvus Sasnadarya Brahmana Churnama Grinantiete. In this verse, she's saying, Aho! She's saying that, alas, just see, even a Shapacha or a dog eater, huh? when he chants the holy name of the Lord, which manifest in the tip of his tongue. That name makes him more qualified than the best of the brahmanas. Like that she is telling. So what is this name? If it is coming in the Agra, uh, Agra, Agra means, uh, which is the name which sits in the tip of the tongue? If you see, Krishna. Say Krishna. Krishna. The tip of the tongue is involved. So Rama. Rama. No, tongue is not involved there. Mama Rama. Thank you, Mama. Where is Krishna? Krishna. Krishna. Say Krishna. Krishna. Ah. See, Shiva Shiva Shambhu, Shiva Shambhu, that is Shiva. Where is Shanmugam? Krishna. Correct, no? Vishnu. Say? Ah, Krishna. Tang is, tip of the tongue is involved, right, no? Krishna. Where is Rama? Rama. Tang is not involved. That means she's talking about which mantra? Krishna's name. Huh? Jihva Agre Vartate Namatubhyam. She is telling. So in this way, this was told by His Holiness uh, Bhakti Vaishnava Ashri Maharaj once was quoting this. Huh? So you will see that uh, he was also telling His Holiness Gaur uh, Krishna Maharaj in those days. Same point he said. Huh? So in this way you will see that uh, when uh, I, I was telling the example why because I was suspecting something, but later on it became clear that. Uh, the, see, the Bhagavatam will say this is Krishna only after four verses. Prabhupada will tell it in advance only. Because Prabhupada is afraid that this fellow may not read further. Yeah. Better he knows here only. Huh? Yeah. So then, uh, instead of becoming offensive to Prabhupada, eventually that turned into affection for Prabhupada. Huh? So Prabhupada is so kind, so compassionate, so concerned about all jivas. And also many purports, Prabhupada repeats the points. One man asked Prabhupada, Swamiji, what is the need for repetition? You are saying the same thing so many times. Prabhupada said, although I am saying the same thing so many times, still you are not following, therefore I have to say. Then he said, <laughs> you know, even though I am saying, repeating so many times, you are not following, then why should I not repeat? Isn't it? He said, so he is very highly upward personality. You see, he took the purports of commentaries of all the acharyas in Sanskrit, 
and he only took as much as is needed to be given in his purport otherwise his bhagavatam will become even more bigger now already the small volume is how many 40 48 the the small one 48 yeah imagine if you took all the commentaries all it will be 108 or something you know nobody will want to read it huh? so therefore he took and then in the purport he says uh, you know uh, reader may refer to vishnu chakravarti thakur or baba tadipika or shridhar swami proper refers like that very highly empowered personality so here is a this thing activity for you name a devotee of krishna who is preaching activities created a miraculous revolution in lives of misguided civilization making degradement whom do you consider as uh, what do you consider as a miracle the miracle many miracles huh? you can say according to you what miracles you think propas did one thing i already told you in such a short span of time making so many devotees what else you think as miracle anybody huh? he peace into happy ha huh? one at a temple single handedly in those years now it's more easy also now people trust is gone now and in those days nothing was there now what else doing this at old age beyond 70 you know beyond 70 years not a joke huh? he was not a young boy huh? doing this in old age humanly impossible action mm-hmm. ah in the late night getting about 12:31 writing commentary uh, besides managing and running the movement along with that writing commentary mm-hmm. sacrificing sleep sacrificing sleep which, uh, which is very rare people will sacrifice money also but not sleep Huh? yeah very good around the world 14 times traveling in their old age huh prabodh was very intelligent you see every day he would take this oil massage why because when you travel a lot it causes vat vata to increase but when you take the oil massage you remove the vat so he was keeping him healthy so that he can travel at bridge and one, one doctor told you are not walking at all you are just you know, sitting in one place your stomach is creating problem then proper started walking one hour every day in the morning so he knew what is what to do in order to keep himself fit to give him his best to the world hmm? very amazing so we will stop at this for today we can take one or two discussion questions anybody then this we will do it next time hmm? with this naivam vidha purushakara start with this next time shri baba ki har waqt vinda ki ja Yes, anybody? Anybody want to comment or add? Uh, hope you didn't become frightened with all the examples I gave you. Huh? Baba counselor, baby counselor, and all that. Huh? Yes, Prabhu. Mm-hmm. Give the mic. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. This was a very, uh, I'd say, uh, very nicely presented. Different uh, kinds of. difficulties uh, devotees face even with counselors sometimes yeah um i have come across you know i've heard from a devotee of a counselor who literally calls him and tells that you cannot preach no i'll preach your people send them to me and uh, you know he's bewildered what to do because he was his counselor at one time right and similarly you know uh, then being in a position where we are being preached we think you know whether we should complain against them or not because it will not be a right thing to do sometimes we blame ourselves that you know maybe i'm actually at fault you know maybe i should not how to know when you are yeah, right say for example a yeah, ex counselor is having a program going on and why is one of the counselees who after some time stopped coming to the program but started his own program let us see but then why is not that mature ha huh? ex knows that the ex couple knows that y couple is not that mature but they want to start preaching uh, and uh, x is calling them compassionately if you can't come every week at least come alternate weeks you know and the y is saying no no we are super busy now you know we have to go we have to print pamphlet we are calling people and lot of people are coming in our colony our program is booming yes it is true program is booming but they are not having adhikar to train them uh, sometimes it happens like that prematurely one want to run a program but although one it does not have the proper adhikar maturity then what i will do i will tell you i will call why personally and uh, tell him okay right now you are busy i won't disturb you when you have a half an hour or one hour time you come i want to talk something important to you 
I'll call and say that, see, Prabhu, you can preach, you can make a big group, you can go on with life. Huh? But tomorrow, if you have suddenly difficulty, you know, uh, at that time, the thing, things can become complicated. You know, your group, people will come and complain to me or complain to the temple. Huh? And there may be some action on you from the temple side. Your whole program may be stopped. That's one possibility. Or you'll be asked to retire and somebody else will be put there. So that is also not good for you. And you will be disheartened you know, by that. Uh, instead of that, I will suggest you that you do what you are doing, but to maintain your connection, not necessarily with me, either with some other devotee, some other leader. Uh, because in this world, our empowerment to preach and shelter people comes from our upward connection. Like for example, one time Vizwanath Ranath Maharaj was going to one place, there was a temple with... Uh, one door and second door and third door like that. Later on, the actual sanctum sanctum will come. But at the gate, there was a very stringent, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, security. You know, there is some famous temple in South. But Maharaj will certainly be allowed. The watchman actually moved aside and uh, he gave. And Radha Kund uh, Prabhu was also there with Maharaj. He called me. I said, I don't want to push myself, Prabhu. I don't have to come. He said, no, 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 Rajasham, just come. You know. If you just stick to Maharaj, they will allow you also. Just be behind him. No gap should be there, he said. So then I was also, because he was too much pushing me, I also went like that. Then first door, they allowed me. We three of us went in. Then second door, all they, they allowed. Then the third door, when we came, that was, there were three, four watchmen there. You know, they stopped me. They told Radhakan Prabhu that, you know, see, Maharaj ki saath aap hai na? Why, why is this fellow coming? He should stay back. Then I was about to stay. But then they asked him, hey, kaun hai? He said, hey, chote maharaja. He said, <laughs> inke saath hi hai. Said, hey, tika, tika, chala. Then I could go with him after that. Huh? So then we went in. Then at last we could go to the sanctum sanctorum. Now one thing you will see, we could go because we were with him. Correct, no? If we are not with him, no, there will be no this thing. We should always remember that when people respect us, they respect us because of our connection to our spiritual master and our parampara. Like there was one village, first time his only Ranath Maharaj was going to that village. You know, a lot of people, there were like 600 people. You know, they were having flowers strewn everywhere and stage was nicely arranged. He was about to do a program. They are waiting, waiting, waiting because the village is a little remote. You know, they have to go by car and... And uh, many of the people in, the, in that village, they hadn't seen Maharaj. They only heard about his glories huh? from their seniors and everybody. The few seniors know they have seen Maharaj. So when the Maharaj car was coming, before Maharaj car and behind Maharaj car, there were other cars also. So Shikshashan Prabhu's car reached first. You know, as soon as he got out, the crowd was so big playing Mardam Kartal. They brought a huge garland and put on his neck. <laughs> Radhanath Maharaj, and they were singing. And he was wondering, why they are giving me such a big garland? Later on, he came to know that was intended for Radhanath Maharaj. Huh? It was intended. And then he said, Are, May Radhanath Maharaj, Maharaj, piche. Huh? Oh, I said, I got the little. You know, <laughs> they took it. So, now when, when I heard this example, I was thinking, so why did they respect him? Because they thought he is? Or, People also will respect us because we are connected to somebody great. Therefore, they respect. The moment we disconnect ourselves from our upward connection and say that, you know, I don't care for him anymore. I don't care for Prabhupada. You know, all of you anyway love me. We are, me and you all, let us be together. They will say, get lost. They will put a chapel garland for us. They will say, get lost. Because we don't want you. We, we like you because you are connected. This much serious the upward connection is. Huh? Because generally what we think, hey, this person who me is too demanding, I can just cut off from him. Huh? And persons equal, they are always giving me feedback, cut off from them. Then me and my people, we will have our island. And in this way, we will wonderfully fly back to Godhead. Huh? Sometimes people try to keep like that and big problems will come in such communities, island-like communities. Huh? So it has happened in different parts of the world. In one part of the world, there was one very powerful counselor who had 200 people under him. I don't want to mention any name or the place. And he was a very powerful preacher, expander and everything. But his wife was very mediocre. 
she was not very active but she was pious type like that but in that group there was one mataji who was also very powerful and she was married lady but her husband was media kar huh? husband hardly he would chant 16 round but hardly come it was like that so at one point of time what happened this preacher started connecting with her in whatsapp for all help yeah you know? because she was like him only uh, you know he was very powerful she was also very powerful they both were connecting and help over a period of time he started developing some enchantment attraction for her so some or other they came to a wrong conclusion he told her that you divorce him and i will divorce my wife we will marry and the moment they did the whole community was shattered uh, into pieces 15 years he took prabhuji the 15 years everybody went away now after 15 years again he has started preaching now but now the potency is gone now now the old people nobody is coming some new people 20 30 people are coming now he was such a powerful personality at one time who who world knows it is con world knows that person but he made a big blunder because he thought people are attracted to me he said no they are not attract- they are attracted to krishna not to us because we are representing krishna therefore they are attracted to us like devaki became extremely beautiful as soon as she possessed krishna correct na no? even kamsa saw my sister has become extraordinarily shining and beautiful because of possessing krishna if i don't possess krishna i forcibly try to make people surrender to me that will not work huh? so our our beauty comes from our possessing guru and krishna in our heart huh? so this we should never forget this fact huh? the reality of life if people are too much giving me respect i i can understand how much these people love my spiritual master how much they have love for prabhupada therefore uh, like you heard the story in uh, pandarpur they make mold toys of vithal and uh, rakumai you seen that they put it in mold and make this toys and sell also many people can buy big size so for bringing those uh, bunch of those molded toys of i mean the vithal rakumai they would keep it you know on the top of a the over the donkey they will put a cloth a big uh, bundle of cloth and over that they would keep and because it will be very heavy they will bring it like that and then they'll keep it and then one by one they will sell it now uh, many people will buy so when the donkey used to come with this uh, toy of vital rakmai he saw that many people on the road are doing this and then bowing down like this and the donkey used to think that you know people very much respect me he was thinking like that huh? one day what happened the toys uh, the vital rakmai toy was not to be brought only the cloth was to be brought so when they brought the cloth nobody did this to donkey because they didn't find vital rakmai vital rakmani correct no they didn't find and the donkey became offended right why you guys are not respecting me today they said what is he talking huh? so the foolish donkey didn't know the respect is not given to him it is given to the lord ships so these examples are all given why to remind ourselves of our true position correct no so now you are asking the question about some subordinate who is going in a, a tangentially a different direction we have to explain these things to him we should tell him see don't think i am telling you this because you have to be connected to me i am not trying to hold you whomever whichever vaishnava you are comfortable with you go and connect with them i only want to see you flourish i don't want to see you perish that means you are a good facilitator he will understand he will say prabhu ji i'll connect with you only why to go to somebody else other people don't even know me you know me so it's good for me prabhu i can't come every week please allow me to come once a month or twice a month i will come and you also visit my program once in three months or something like that come and speak and then naturally when you go to his program you glorify him and his wife and the family and everything and that become you don't know how much weight you gather when a senior glorifies you huh? you don't even know that because you cannot tell your own glories to anybody if you say you will be gone huh? they will say get lost they will say but to some other superior to whom you are reporting they glorify you that prabhu you know he is such a good soul is doing then people will develop the same trust in you as much they, they have trust in the senior huh? so therefore the authority subordinate relationship is a very important one Uh, when we earn the trust of you know seniors and gurus and everybody then it becomes easy for us to preach and uh, develop a community 
and we can explain that to him we can tell him you are not the only one many people have tried to become independent kings uh, in their own lives and they all would eventually perish when the trouble will come i'll tell you not in the first year when you make first second third fourth fifth year when you go when the community becomes little mature they become 16 owners and getting initiated there will definitely be different ideologies will come uh, at that time they will say you are telling us to obey you whom are you obeying they will ask correct no are you obeying your seniors say that you are not obedient to anybody why should we obey to you huh? you only want us to surrender to you you are independent mind that you are doing things that is another big problem some community leaders will always say that you know i am pet of radheshyam prabhu there are many people say that radheshyam prabhu told me this radheshyam prabhu told me that but actually out of that 9 out of 10 things i didn't tell them <laughs> whatever they want to say they will say who said it yeah. then many people ask me prabhu ji we have heard so many of your lectures in your lectures you say the opposite huh? you don't say this but he says that you said this then i will catch this person tell me show me what all i said you know yeah. i has never said this no no prabhu ji if you take your name it's very helpful you know <laughs> you know <laughs> i said this is there are people who take my name what can i do huh? therefore nowadays i am producing almost one lecture every day huh? i i have told the people whenever you have any doubt check with these lectures huh? you know you can check what i am speaking i i am just trying to re- hear and represent proper so uh, if somebody takes my name like imagine somebody says something then i'll tell them you have to check with me through a email or what's up message that prabhu is it true this is what you are saying correct no so so in this way the proper you know respectable connection between different levels of devotees is very very important in this moment you are a spiritual moment huh? the parampara connection is very important you can explain to them but if they don't listen eventually they will preach for a while jump up and down after some time they'll get tired also sometimes such programs split also into two sometimes there is, there are internal quarrels uh, when people leave the uh, community when a person uh, you know becomes very pushy and uh, he says that you know i cannot i will you know i won't send you for initiation uh, let us see how you will get initiation we uh, dekhenge huh? they will want to prove to him that without you i will get it both of them become uh, vindictive and uh, that kind of thing or when when a person tries to be very possessive and intrudes into their private affairs people don't like that is another thing or somebody criticizes another fellow counselor or leader you know or one boasts about oneself that i am very empowered that kind of thing if somebody speaks like that so uh, these these are not uh, these are diseased symptoms eh? and uh, therefore one thing you can be assured that uh, we may be concerned about somebody we can express our concern to them but ultimately every jiva has to fly their own plane you know we can only try to give them good advice if they listen they will be saved if they don't listen what to do we can only pray for them from a distance we can't do beyond that but it's our duty to tell them proji uh, just one another thing proji uh, i heard that you know um, that when a community grows beyond a certain number there is one leader you know who has made that community flourish and everything but as you rightly said after some time if the leader has some ulterior motives or he is not presenting himself properly the community starts looking for others correct and then he restricts them from going to others yeah. right and then the whole you know community breaks yeah. i heard that in iskon i don't know from where in iskon but i heard that some rule is being passed that after a certain size and certain number of years that community cannot be headed by one devotee even if he is a person who is you should have a kind of a kind of a council Direct you know concept. is it true and how is it no, being implemented there are two type of council one is say for example you have four five people with you you know and you are the leader you are like a senior most and other four five people take different departments they take and they all like you very much they work under you and with you that's one style another one is the leader has become very this thing improper and uh, many people are raising uh, some kind of opposition and things like that then sometimes gbc come comes in and they make a committee and they make him as one of the members 
you know, four or five members. They say, you can also be there, but you are not the only one. Besides you, there will be three, four more others also. And you all will have equal power. You won't have any veto power. You know, then everybody together. And the convener may be him or convener may be rotating also. They may do things like that also they do. Both the things I have seen in his con. But generally speaking, Prabhuji, as soon as any community touches 100 devotees, huh? for example, immediately there should be at least three, four core members who are most prominent in the community who should work with that main leader intimately. The reason is, when it touches 100, 120 people, 16 hours I am saying, when a community has so many 16 hours, because many people develop liking for certain people, and they also connect with those leaders. And if the senior leader is in touch with them, and he has a good relation with them, they will also bring some of the grievances of the community to him. Hmm? Like I have, for example, Antaradi Prabhu and Revatipati Prabhu. We have such an honest relationship. Antaradi Prabhu can frankly come and tell me, one, for example, one meeting, I had decided that we will not go to first year uh, engineering. We will, all of us will preach in second year. Everybody nodded the head. Huh? Almost there were 25-30 preachers. And after the meeting was over, I asked Antati Prabhu, what are they saying? Antati Prabhu asked, next day he told me, Prabhuji, secondary preaching is not good. Boys are very spoiled. They want to preach to first years only. And I didn't even ask him then why they nodded their head. I didn't ask. Because I know that they will open up to him more than me. Because they see me more like a father. But they see him like a brother. You know? No problem. Next day, I called for a meeting and again said, Prabhuji, I changed my mind. Let us do it one day. First year only. He said, Hari Bol. <laughs> <laughs> so, you need confidential associates who are honest with you and they, do, they will not fear to tell you what is going on. Huh? If you make very stringent rule, they may not like. For example, I made one rule in those days. If you are coming late for Mangalarati, when everybody else is chanting, you should sit and write 108 times Maha Mantra. And I, I, in my entire career, last 30 years, only once I had to write, 108. I wrote also once in the temple hall sitting and I understood how difficult it is. Because, you know, your rounds are remaining. <laughs> All 16 rounds you have to chant in the daytime, it's difficult. So, then Antatipu came and told, some devotees told me that, Prabhuji, some devotees are a little unhappy. They are asking, why not write during the day and submit it at night, at the, before the end of the day, instead of writing during chanting. I immediately implemented it. And everybody became very happy after that. So in this way, we can have uh, a team of people running because many people connect with somebody and that somebody is in touch with you. And the whole community goes very well, very smooth. Plus, the work also becomes divided. There's a saying in English, you know, uh, responsibility turns sand into gold. You say, no? So which means if you give responsibility of few departments to each of those three, four fellows, they will run it very well also. Huh? They will, they will do a very good job. Because they are given responsibility, they take it to their uh, heart and they do it like that. That way, division of labor, division of responsibility, plus uh, getting confidential information about what people are feeling. Uh, like for example, uh, you gave a class one day. After the class is over, some of your confidential people will come and say that oh, some people are talking that the class was a bit heavy, you know, about Vaishnava Parada or something like that, you know. Or you said, said certain statements, they feel that this is more than even what Prabhupada said. Some are asking, where is Prabhupada's quote and things like that. So, the next time you have to balance it. Because our philosophy is achintya beheda, abheda tattva. Sometimes you go to one side too much. Then you also balance from the other side, correct now? Yeah. So, in that way, having some confidential associates in our own community who are very senior, just next to us, having a sweet relationship with them is very, very important. You know, without that proper relation, you know, when they don't trust you, then it, the whole community becomes very affected. And the biggest problem for the leaders is what? Because they also have grown up, they will want some freedom also. Freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of giving ideas and everything like that. Therefore, they should all grow, be in the same boat and go together. Therefore, we say, first you form a society, then there's a scum. Eh? And then their norms are made, then perform. So these are the four stages. First, you form uh, your community. When it becomes 100, 120, 150, and then the storm comes where there are tussles. You know? Because the leader, what he does, hey, why are you not coming for the program? You are not doing any services. You know, you are simply coming for prasadam and going, or something like that. You know, or 
this family is very lazy, that family is crazy, or some comments he makes, but then that word gets around. Hey, Prabhuji ne bola, you are crazy. Huh? Hey, Prabhuji ne bola, you are lazy. Huh? That word gets around. Then people start showing grievances. Then there's a storm. Huh? And then norm. Norm means, then you form a proper group of seniors, confidence. You also mind your words, what you speak. You become more careful. And Vaishnava qualities, you start cultivating proper behavior. So then norms come. Then you can perform very nicely after that. <laughs> so, in this way, uh, uh, any one more important thing I have not yet spoken, which is the Brahmachari and Grihastha roles. So, Madhvacharya Sampradaya, they have one very beautiful example. Uh, they say that Grihasthas have to go to offices and outside world and they cannot avoid the association of non-devotees. They are forced to associate despite they are not wanting also. So therefore, they are compared to a pond where sometimes people pass stool. Correct, no? Some ponds, people wash their buttocks back in a pond. So there some stool pieces will be there. Similarly, devotees, despite escaping very intelligently, still some bad association comes in a good office. And the brahmachari sannyas are compared to fishes who eat away that uh, stool. And wherever there are fishes, that pond will be Clean, you know that because that stool and other things are taken away by them. Huh? But at the same time, the fish cannot survive without water. So, grihasthas are compared to water, and brahmacharis are compared to fish because brahmacharis sannyasis they don't earn money; they need uh, charity. But who gives charity? Grihasthas. And in turn, brahmacharis should give classes. Brahmacharis sannyasis they should give classes. In the, and they are they're supposed to be completely like children, completely transparent. And that transparency is very charming to the grihasthas, especially if one is unattached, uh, very detached, is focused in Krishna. Uh, so grihasthas get a lot of strength when they see good devotees. Uh, and then they feel that hey, this fellow has given up everything of the world. I can at least give up a little bit. Uh, let me give some charity. They do. So the grihastha brahmachari combination is extremely powerful, provided there, there is no power fight. <clears throat> Power fight means <clears throat> Brahmacharya says, all of them are attracted to me, he says. And Grihastha says, no, to me. Then both are catching Shika and pulling, he says. Huh? Both Grihastha leader and Brahmacharya leader. That's a very bad combination. But if Brahmacharya says, I will just come, give lecture and go. Prabhuji, my, I can only speak Shastra, but you can give, give shelter to people, especially Grihastha problems and all you are helping, which is a real thing, you know, cultivating people. Your good wife is taking care of so many Matajis. You are taking care of Prabhujis. Like, it's, it's a fact, actually. Jayadevpur Satyamaji in, in Pune, they were cultivating and caring for people. I used to just go give lecture and go. Here I do the same thing, correct? You know, is there any Grihastha calling and asking me solve our household problems? I don't attend to that. Uh, people talk to me about preaching, expansion. People talk about sometimes management-related things. Uh, but otherwise, personal... Problems, Mataji talk to senior lady and Prabhuji talk to senior man. This is very, very ideal. And Brahmachari Grihas, the combination is also very powerful, provided they can function very smoothly. Because in a traditional Vedic Varnashrama, they have their roles. Both have their roles. Because sometimes what happens, the Grihastha man or uh, woman, you know, they are also living in the outside world uh, and uh, they are also doing a job, they are earning. And due to which, sometimes the members of the congregation can take them lightly. Like Satyad Maharaj used to tell me, Rashampu, these ladies are coming from rich families. They don't increase chanting beyond one round. You strongly tell them, she would tell me. And then after the program is over, she'll bring them. Prabhuji, she's such a wonderful devotee. She will be praising them like anything. And I will strongly tell them you have to start four rounds. And then they will look at Satyad Maharaj. I'm chanting one round. Is it all right? She will say, I don't know. You have to check Prabhuji. Prabhuji says four rounds. <laughs> Sadhu Baba bol di, aapko karna padega. Then they went to 16 rounds eventually. Mm-hmm. So we can do what we can do, what they can do, what they can do. Correct, no? And also many people, when they see sadhus, they feel naturally like, uh, they feel charitable. They feel like giving something for God's service. People give. Mm-hmm. So in this way, in a community, there has to be a very powerful uh, combination of sadhus and the grihasthas. That, that community can flourish like anything. But everybody, whether you are a sadh, uh, brahmachari or a grihastha, 
we have to be very very careful about not becoming victim to false ego and false pride because today i gave many examples becoming extremely possessive becoming proud becoming a fault finder or a blasphemer leg pulling back biting all these are very very horrible uh, horrible qualities in the condition stage which we have to very sincerely uh, chant and purify if we don't the, actually every community will see that some impurities don't go away very easily therefore some amount of problems are there always when you put a fire in chula there is also smoke krishna says in 18th chapter of gita when you lit fire there is also smoke but we should reduce the smoke and increase the fire fire of sankirtan but to we should know that the nature of kali is to create quarrel uh, kali has four bad qualities quarrel rebellion independence and one more what is it hypocrisy first people are hypocritical when you point out they quarrel uh, then they rebel and finally they become independent so these four qualities are very deadly and we should not allow this kali's qualities to come into our community we have to protect the community the purpose of the leaders coming together is because if leaders are well situated every leader is connected to many uh, devotees with them so in turn they all will be protected also taken care so all of you taking out this time and coming is a very wonderful thing and we should uh, and as we come every time we learn something and go this notes are also coming to you you can read it at your leisure and contemplate more and then as, as you get leaders and your care you can share with them the same also you can teach them and prepare them to become stable mature inspiring leaders mm-hmm. सिर्फ पार्की लाल भक्त वृंदा की